Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. When it comes to Hollywood icons, Betty Davis is among the most notable. She was the first actor to ever break double digits in Academy Award nominations, making nearly 100 films over the course of her career. She became known for throwing herself into roles and was willing to be painted in an unflattering light for the sake of a better picture, making her an early trailblazer, to say the least. How did Betty Davis use black magic on her enemies as a witch? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Betty Davis was straight and to the point, never mincing her words. In fact, many of her friends believed that she actually enjoyed being labelled an A-class outspoken woman, and that too in an era when ladies who spoke their mind were sent home. However, her personality and acting skills were such that she could be despised but never dismissed. She went on to become the first lady of film and won innumerable awards throughout her acting career, which spanned 60 years. From historical and period movies to contemporary crime thrillers and romantic films, this two-time Academy Award winner acted in more than 100 films. Moreover, she never flinched from taking up unsympathetic roles. Instead, she took them up as a challenge. Betty Davis was truly a genius who was revered by many years after her death. Often referred to as the first lady of the American screen, Betty Davis created a new kind of screen heroine. She was a liberated woman in an industry dominated by men. She was known as an actress that could play a variety of difficult and powerful roles, and because of this, she set a new standard for women on the big screen. Independent off-screen as well, her battles with studio bigwigs were legendary. With a career spanning six decades, few in the history of film rival her longevity and appeal. Off-screen, her brilliance had a more solid reputation, as she was someone who was reportedly difficult to work with and prone to walking off the set when things didn't go her way. However, right up until her death in 1989, Davis maintained she was only ever fighting for professionalism, something women of her stature didn't necessarily receive back in the day from the male-dominated studios. Betty Davis would probably have been burned as a witch if she had lived two or three hundred years ago. She gives the curious feeling of being charged with power which can find no ordinary outlet. She told her interviewers that not only was she born near Salem in Massachusetts, site of the notorious witch trials in the 17th century, but that she was actually descended from one of the women, Mary Bradbury, who was convicted of certain detestable arts, including taking animal form and casting evil spells on ships. She herself came into the world like a witch, Davis told a biographer, claiming, a bolt of lightning hit a tree in front of the house the moment I was born. It was, everyone assumed, Hollywood hokum aimed at bolstering the star's image as a fierce and unconventional screen icon who refused to conform. Few took it seriously, least of all one imagined Betty Davis herself. But that assumption is misplaced, according to astonishing new allegations from the star's only natural child, Barbara Hyman. She told that her manipulative and hard-drinking mother Betty did indeed believe she was a witch and would cast spells on her enemies from her bed. Not only that, she claimed she once saw her mother transform into an evil demonic presence. She claimed she and her family were among many victims of Davis's black magic. Mother operated heavily in the occult. Her own mother said she was evil from day one. Betty Davis was born Ruth Davis on April 5, 1908 in Lowell, Massachusetts. Her father, Harlow Morrill Davis, was a patent attorney and her mother was Ruth Augusta. Betty also had a younger sister named Barbara Harriet or Bobby. She was called Betty as a child and kept the name throughout her career. After her parents divorced in 1916, she and her sister Barbara moved frequently through New England while their mother pursued a photography career. Although she had little money, her mother Ruthie sent Betty and her sister to boarding school. Upon graduating Cushing Academy, Betty enrolled in John Murray Anderson's dramatic school. 
She graduated from Cushing Academy in Ashburnham, Massachusetts, with an idea that she might try acting, but she received little encouragement, as she was not considered very beautiful. She had made up her mind, though, and she headed for New York City. Her first foray into the entertainment business was when she was cast in the chorus line of the Broadway show Innocent Eyes. By the end of 1924, she had officially signed a contract with MGM for $75 a week. In 1929, she made her Broadway debut in Broken Dishes. She also landed a role in Solid South. In 1930, she moved to Hollywood to screen test for Universal. Six small films later, Betty's contract with Universal was not renewed. When Davis travelled to Hollywood for her first screen test in 1930, she made a long, arduous journey, just to get royally insulted at the end of it. She waited at the airport for ages, having been told that a studio head would meet her there. Eventually, she just left, assuming that there had been a miscommunication, or worse, she had been stood up. For her entire career, Davis had to struggle with Hollywood's harsh beauty standards. She was a beautiful woman, but to Hollywood executives, she'd never be a screen siren. Davis learned this the hard way. It turned out that the studio head had been at the airport to pick her up. Instead, he assumed she wasn't around because he didn't see anyone attractive enough to be an actress, even though Davis was right there. She wanted to go back to Broadway, but a phone call from Warner Brothers quickly changed her mind. In 1932, she signed a seven-year contract with Warner Brothers. The film, The Man Who Played God, landed Betty on the path to stardom. She was a smash when she was lent out to RKO for the role of Mildred. This was her first critically acclaimed hit. Davis's first widely renowned role was that of a prostitute in Of Human Bondage. She made waves by being unafraid to dive into a role of destitution and raw humanity, the opposite of the glamour her Hollywood peers craved at the time. Her role in Dangerous led to her nomination for a Best Actress Oscar. She became the first Warner Brothers actress to win the coveted award. Despite her success, Warner Brothers continued to offer Betty unsatisfactory roles. In 1936, she challenged the studio by going to England to make pictures. Jack Warner sued her, and she was forced to honour her contract. Upon her return, however, Betty was offered a new contract and better roles. There were other bright spots in women's finances and actresses winning in the system. In order to win her, Warners had promised her not only 8000 a week, but her choice of stories. It was probably the first fabulous contract for an actress since the innovation of talking pictures. In 1939, Betty won her second Oscar for Jezebel. She also received Oscar nominations the next five years in a row. The stature of Davis the actress continued to grow. Ty Burr of Entertainment Weekly noted that Davis was a top box office draw throughout the 30s and 40s, and in 1948 she was the highest paid star in Hollywood. Among her memorable roles in the 1930s and 1940s were Dark Victory, which she once told Harry Bowman of the Dallas News was her favourite film, The Private Lives of Elizabeth, and Essex and Juarez, also 1939. All this and Heaven 2 and The Letter, both 1940, The Little Foxes, Now Voyager, Watch on the Rhine, The Corn is Green, Deception and A Stolen Life, and the delightful June Bride, which showed her comic touch. The top box office draw throughout a good part of the 1930s, Davis was unlike any other Hollywood star in look, style, frank sexuality or career control. She refused old-fashioned conventions like the myth of a woman's need of male wisdom and protection. Davis's persona as a star was based on something else, acting. Where other female performers used the consistency of their image, their beauty and fashionability as selling points, Davis thrived in roles that required her to transform and often bury her inherent aesthetic appeal. In mid-1938, Davis had vaulted to a new level of stardom with Jezebel, a movie about a southern belle whose brazenness is embodied by the red dress she insists on wearing to her antebellum community's social event of the year. On set, Davis had begun an affair with the film's director, William Wyler, 
and she credited her performance as a woman in love with Henry Fonda to the fact that her beloved Willie was standing behind the camera. But Davis also had a husband, Ham Nelson, who had been her high school sweetheart. When she realised she was pregnant, probably with Wyler's baby, Davis had an abortion. When the Jezebel shoot was over, Davis and Wyler went their separate ways, and holding on to her marriage vows, she attempted to move on. Betty Davis was never a raving beauty. Be that as it may, she was a real man-eater once she got the hang of it. Claudette Colbert once said that the only big star she knew of, including herself, who made it to the top without going via the casting couch, was Betty. Basically, that was because she was already in demand when she was signed up from Broadway. There was no need to offer her body to get her foot in the door. The door was wide open from the beginning. Though she was essentially the same age as Catherine Hepburn, and had in fact arrived in Hollywood earlier, Davis's stardom was slower to come. So in a year when stars like Hepburn and Greta Garbo were labelled box office poison, Davis was well positioned as a relatively fresh face and by the end of the decade she had replaced Kay Francis as the top female star at Warner Brothers. In particular, Betty Davis had many well-known relationships in Hollywood. The starlet with the dreamiest eyes was actually married four times, and was rumoured to have a number of relationships in between those marriages. There were some men on this list that she had hilarious anecdotes about, written for all to read in her very own autobiographies, and then there were some relationships that she stayed a little more private about, but that were reported on. Davis's first husband was a successful band leader, Harmon Oscar Nelson Jr., and it is rumoured that she nicknamed the Oscar Award after him because its backside had an uncanny resemblance to his. Another marriage to Arthur Farnsworth ended tragically, with Farnsworth dying from a skull fracture after a fall. He had apparently suffered from an undiagnosed blood clot after falling in New Hampshire, which made him experience vertigo that resulted in a second fatal fall on the streets of Hollywood. The LA Times reported that after hearing the news, Davis was hysterical from grief and under a physician's care. After Farnsworth's death, Davis married artist William Grant Sherry in 1945. Their relationship was tumultuous, but they had a daughter, Barbara, who later wrote a tell-all book about life with Davis as a mother. George Brenton Davis had a relatively intense affair when his second marriage ended in 1937. After that, Davis and Gary Merrill met on the set of All About Eve and married the same year. The couple adopted a son and a daughter, but eventually divorced in 1960. Another famous fellow was Gig Young. The relationship between Young and Davis as a dalliance but that still counts as something. She also had a brief affair with Glenn Ford, Humphrey Bogart, Vincent Sherman. These two began an alleged relationship on the set of Old Acquaintance. They later had a more Frenemone-style relationship when they worked together on another film. As we all know, producers didn't bend to Betty's will, but don't feel too bad for her. Davis's career was just heating up. While filming the movie Dangerous with her iconic frenemy Joan Crawford, Davis got embroiled in a fiery love triangle. Davis fell for her elegant co-star, Franchot Tone, who was already dating Joan Crawford. She seduced her leading men and left her rivals quaking with fear. Betty Davis made an affair with Howard Hughes work for her. Shortly after his 1938 flight around the world, Howard Hughes was an honoured guest at a Hollywood benefit dinner for the animal rescue organisation, the Tailwaggers Society. The host of the event was the president of Tailwaggers, actress Betty Davis. Howard took notice of Betty and approached her. He seemed reserved, even shy, Davis later said. He spoke softly and I had to lean close to hear him. When he introduced himself, he looked into my eyes, not down my dress. That really impressed me, though if I didn't want men looking, why didn't I wear a higher-necked dress? Before the night was through, Hughes asked Davis if he could see her again. I was flattered, Davis recalled. I was married, I was bored, I accepted. In the 1950s, Davis's career began to struggle and she experienced tragedy behind closed doors. 
She adopted a daughter, Margot, but the girl was diagnosed with severe brain damage induced during birth and had to be placed in an institution after just three years. As Davis began to be aged out of the industry, her later career became overshadowed by a feud with fellow star Joan Crawford. However, this feud was largely exaggerated and was simply a sad by-product of both actresses vying for two scarce roles for women. In 1983, Davis was diagnosed with breast cancer and subsequently had four strokes. But even serious illness couldn't keep her from doing what she wanted. She had a mastectomy, underwent physical therapy and got right back to acting, while still smoking 100 cigarettes a day. In spite of all her struggles, Betty Davis prevailed. When her breast cancer returned and she died in 1989, she left behind a phenomenal legacy of achievements, and her foundation provides college scholarships for young actors to this day. You can't think of the golden age of Hollywood without thinking of Betty Davis. Known for playing imperfect, complex characters, the actress was an undeniable star who prided herself on taking risks and fully committing to her roles. Her work ethic paid off, and we still remember her today. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Betty Davis? With her famously big eyes and her infamously unlikable characters, Davis poured everything she had into her craft.